Great. Uh, hello. Um, uh, I'm, as Nick said, I'm Aaron Callender. Uh, I'm an associate character artist at Rockstar North. Um, and uh, this talk is called Distilled Portfolio Tips, Tricks and Advice. Never mind, what a hero. Okay. Uh, so, uh, am I okay? Can, I, can you all hear me? Yes. Cool. So, uh, uh, incidentally, like like uh, has been said previously, I'm Aaron Callender. I graduated with a 2-1 uh, in 2018 from Solent University uh, with a specialization in character art, uh, mostly realism. Um, at the time, I didn't really uh, understand exactly where I sat in terms of my... Um, uh, where I sat in terms of the quality of my work, where I could really apply to, and how uh, how these kind of um, and how to actually improve, to actually get the spots that I wanted. Um, I applied to a few places and realized fairly fast that my portfolio at the time wasn't particularly good, uh, and uh, had then to uh, or chose then to try and improve and figure out exactly how um, had to figure out very fast how to actually do that. Um, so this talk is mostly based on a thread I made on Twitter uh, not too long ago for an event called Portfolio Day. Uh, it is uh, a collection of advice and um, tips gathered from um, a few of my friends, um, some people that advised me and some people that um, just kind of chimed in. Um, it's distilled in such a way that is uh, relevant for most disciplines, um, but obviously this is mostly through the lens of character up. Um, but hopefully it, it will be relevant to most people. Um, first and foremost, and the big thing that came up all the time uh, by basically everyone was to really understand the level required to actually get into industry. So uh, a lot of the time um, when, especially as students, uh, you'll kind of just compare yourself around to people in your class and potentially to uh, people that you don't necessarily um, uh, people that uh, that you are uh, being surrounded by, people that you're consuming the work of, um, and uh, the uh, the other side of that is the people that you're seeing on art station tend to be people that are mostly either like seniors, established people, or um, people that just generally have like a, a longer time, bigger following, that kind of thing. Um, so there's not really kind of like this really solid understanding a lot of the time of what is the level to get into industry. Uh, these two images are from um, one of which was from Hazel Brown, who was lovely enough to submit her or like add her student work to the thread, uh, just as a touchstone. Um, uh, the other one is by a friend of mine called Brecky Thor, the upper one, the alien boy. Uh, and he that recently got him a job at a, a place in Iceland that I can't remember the name of, but if you go to his art station profile, you can find it, um, which I will link later on. Um, the yeah, um, so ideally the ways to do this, mostly through ArtStation. Um, ArtStation uh, challenges are a really good way, especially older ones, to find out the what happened to the winners, what happened where they are. Um, for newer things, you can also find a lot of people on Discords. Um, you can find a lot of people on Twitter. It's it's fairly simple to do. A lot of the time you can, you can just Google junior whatever artist at studio and a lot of time the art station will come up and you can use that to try and get a, a bead on exactly what kind of quality level you actually want. Um, I did forget to say as well, um, if anyone, I timed this talk to be about 15 minutes, um, so if there are any questions past that, um, uh, I don't know if there's a chat system here, I, don't, I, can't, I can't see one, um, but uh, if, if people have any questions, feel free to um, shoot them in. And then potentially I can look at them uh, later on if I don't cover anything. Um, I think Kelly is kindly uh, said that she can moderate those while I focus on not breaking my PC. Uh, cool. So presentation is the next one that came up a lot of the time. It's the last, that last 5% that tends to really push a piece outside of like the, uh, just the general kind of student vibe. A lot of the time, it'll be it'll be the simpler things that you can kind of do to really push things. Stuff like lighting, your environment, podium, pose, uh, specifically for characters. Um, these are the things that will really kind of like push something past just being a standard kind of character into being an art piece. 
similar to an environment where like instead of becoming like a collection of objects in a scene you can actually like start using composition uh, effects um try and really get an idea of like what you're trying to to use a phrase to tell to tell a story um which is a little bit of a a, a weird like not something i try and say too much but it is applicable here um, you want to kind of draw the eye and move it around and use that as a basis to actually create in your art um, rather than just like say a character or environment. Um, just for this for this piece I recently posted, um, I think that it took me about two weeks from getting her posed and in engine and lighting kind of finalized to getting her actually up on our station. And that was all the iteration. And I have a very big screenshots folder in Unreal that uh that is uh, painfully extensive um but i never really want to open ever again um okay so uh learning environments the big thing that i said earlier is just to avoid at all costs just just basing your where you are off other students so or other students around you um in your class specifically Find finding people on Discords, or incidentally here, Discords, Twitter, forums, art station, is going to give you um, is going to give you basically, essentially, people to actually work from, uh, basic people to speak to, people to get crit from, and a lot of the time, the reason that people work in this industry is the people around you, and meeting those early on is is going to keep you going, keep you motivated, and keep you improving. And it's kind of like a weird thing with, I think people get a little bit confused with networking, especially. Networking isn't just networking with professionals, it's networking with students around you as well, and kind of meeting other people, meeting other people in the same position as you. And then a lot of the time, the people that I knew personally, um, when I was working on my portfolio post-uni, around the same time as me, like became, uh, got into industry about the same time, which obviously became industry context. Um, it can be really useful in something that doesn't really, that I think is kind of like not as pushed as it should be, is the sense that like people from other universities as well, especially there'll be people that are really trying to like reach out and find other people and you can learn a lot from them, which is uh, was super useful for me. Um, so, <laughs> I'm kind of going all over the place here because this is obviously kind of like based on a Twitter thread and a lot of these are kind of like um, very quickly posted. So I hope it's not going too fast. Um, I know this is recorded, so if anyone wants to go back and um, I think this is, I'm not sure if it's recorded, but if anyone wants to go back um, or ask me specifically to go back and like um, to um, go further into something, that's, that's completely fine. Um, Next, though, in your in your portfolio specifically, just try and showcase sh showcase your technicals, showcase um, topo, unwraps, breakdown. Um, if you really want to, your texture breakdowns, which are completely human unreadable, and they always have the little slashes in there, and you always have the kind of like the diffuse uh, row maps, and then uh, normal, and no one actually knows what they look like, but they look cool, I guess. You can slam those in as well. Um, they're always better than not showing them a lot of the time. Um, it's always assumed that, or like I personally would always assume that if you have no, um, if you don't have a background in industry and your work is up on art station or something, if you're a student, for instance, um, it, it's it's safe to assume that you're unwrapped with garbage. It, it, and if you don't post them, it's assumed that they're like super garbage, in my opinion, anyway. So. In that sense, it's better, even if they are bad, just post them because it's better to post them and be like, okay, you have an understanding of like, okay, I'm here, I'm this level, I know what I'm talking about, like, I, I want to be better at this kind of thing. Um, topo as well, it isn't, um, it isn't really expected for anyone to come into industry and really have a full, proper understanding of topology. Um, you will get taught it, you will have a, a couple of days where you just get like, you just learn a lot of stuff very quickly about Unwraps and Popo. And um, that, that's kind of just expected. You need, all you need is a baseline understanding. And um, from there, you can basically branch out from there. It's also worth knowing that basically 
a lot of studios will just have completely different ways of doing things. Um, it's not, there's no real like one way of doing your unwraps apart from like very core fundamentals like straining stuff, packing correctly, um, potentially like using different UV channels. Um, there's not really anything like that's past that. There's not really anything that's like super like where you should place things, like how many materials you should have. Different places will have different kind of like ways of doing this. Um, so as long as you just have a baseline, you're completely fine. Um, so, but also like past that, remember first and foremost, you're an artist first. Um, your appeal, your appeal, like if you're making a character, you need to have that character be appealing. Um, if it's a, if it's technically impressive, but does not have that kind of appeal all of the time, you basically end up with a meta human. No offense, Aaron, and it kind of like it essentially becomes this kind of like um, not really pushed kind of like uh, like fairly like standard character, right? Um, whereas if you have an artistically impressive character with like simplistic or passable technicals, you can that is something that can be taught fairly quickly and uh, something that is will essentially get you more attention and more kind of like appreciation simply because it's it artistically it functions. Um, uh, you should try and avoid the asset expense rabbit, expense rabbit hole as best you can. I call it this because I think a lot of people kind of start to, I think a lot, a lot of people will try and be like, okay, what's the poly count of a specific character? What's the kind of, how many materials can I have? How many kind of texture sets? What kind of like uh, PBR maps should I have? This kind of thing. And a lot of the time, like I said earlier, it doesn't necessarily matter too much. Um, it, as long as the art is appealing and it works in your portfolio specifically, um, that's the kind of thing that at work you'll be told probably by a tech artist that you need to kind of like simmer down and like check your like kind of like check your topology, check your this kind of jazz. We only have this many drawers, that kind of thing. As long as you have that core understanding, um, you're kind of fine. Um, the big thing I try and preach is just to work from our station challenge rules. They're kind of like a touchstone of um, the kind of poly counts materials. I think it's, off the top of my head, I think it's like 100k tries and two 4k texture sets. I think, which is basically, I think could still be broken down into something like 32 materials, like 1k materials or something like that, which is hilarious. Um, but still like completely fine, realistically. Um, if you really want a touchstone, that's a good one to kind of uh, work towards. Um, I know that's kind of useful for students a lot of the time as well, just having that kind of reference. Um, yep. So past that in your portfolio, stick to focus projects. So try and fill gaps in your portfolio. Um, a lot of the time um, you can, I'm trying to think of an example, but a lot of the time you have, say if you have a collection of uh, modern military soldiers or something like that, and you have a lot of cloth work, that's completely valid. It still showcases that you have a core understanding of garment construction and past that like potentially prop construction. However, obviously, if you start getting, uh, if you that that person will then question, okay, can this person do potentially armor, like uh, medieval armor or something like that? And how does that kind of factor into whether or not their employability? Um, the um, so generally speaking, material-wise, try and stick to kind of like, especially if you're doing characters, um, you need you will generally be trying to hit, you'll be trying trying to make like bipeds. Um, Creatures are fine, uh, but like a lot of characters are humans. And so like you gotta be trying to be focused in terms of like what you actually want to create. Um, creatures are still fine, they showcase like different things. Um, but ideally for a, a lot of jobs, you still wanna be basically showing bipeds. Um, there will be exceptions to that as well. I, I do wanna preface, uh, preface or like um, just, just put forward that, I, that I'm coming at this from a very AAA Kind of perspective as well like if you if you want to go into creatures if you want to go into stylized if you want to go into basically anything like that you probably can all this still applies but you need to understand what kind of job you're going for and then be able to tailor your portfolio to that so the, all these examples i'm kind of giving are essentially for obviously like a triple someone that wants to go in a triple a level um 
if you want to go in at a different level, that's completely fine. Like if you want to do creatures and things like that, there are potentially spots around the industry which you can kind of jump in on that. And um, the main point here is that you should just try and like find out exactly what you want to do, find people that already do it and tailor your portfolio to them and try and figure out what they did to really um, appeal to the person making the hiring decisions. So uh, finally, last things to remember past that, um, the, um, if you, oh wait, I missed the thing. Um, <laughs> avoid reworking all the pieces, if only because when you're a student, you'll be improving very, very fast. And so even just going back to something like from a month ago or two months ago, it'll be, it'll be very difficult to try and work these things back and try and like, um, fix the issues that you made before. Um, new work will always be better um, with certain, with, with like certain exceptions, of course. You really want to try and just be focused with what you create um, and really try and kind of um, really, uh, really just try and like keep improving as best you can. Like take fresh starts. Once you finish a character, that's it, move on. Um, do something different. And it's it's a morale thing as well a lot of the time because it's a case of like once you, a character can take anywhere from like, I don't know, like four or five weeks to like a couple of months to like, I think the last project I did, it took me around a year on and off. So it's a case of just like being able to move on to something new is just really refreshing. Um, more of like a personal thing, fan art is, I, I've said avoid fan art here, fan art is completely fine. Be very, very careful when you're doing fan art for games because if you're doing fan art for games, you have to remember that a lot of the characters created are being made by a team with people around them, professionals around them. Um, people that have a very, like a tech background that actually make like cool stuff around them. And a lot of the time you are one person and trying to attain these will always give you a piece that is always compared to the original. So the example I always give is uh, people that kind of like try, will try and do like um, fan art of Ellie from The Last of Us, and which is awesome. It, it's it, it's a really it's a really tricky piece to get to, and it's really it, it's still worth doing. But at the end of the day, you're always going to be compared to a piece that is made by some of the best in like the best industry talent in the world, it's being supported by the best technical talent in the world, while they're being surrounded by other excellent artists, and so. And then past that, your work will be compared to that original model. And probably, uh, if you can get to it, that's awesome. You're a god. I, fantastic. Um, but I, I just be careful. Um, it's something that I think a lot of people, a trap that people can fall into, if only because there's obviously the reason that we get into games a lot of time is games. And characters from games will kind of inspire you and you want to really kind of make these characters. Um, just be careful. If you really want to consider doing them in a different style, um, pushing uh, pushing for a stylized character or pushing for a, a stylized version of a realistic character or vice versa can be really good because um, it can kind of give you, um, you can kind of make that character and kind of put your own spin on it and try and understand kind of like a, a showcase of an understanding of that character past just almost kind of just trying to emulate it, if that makes sense. Um, Hopefully that covers everything. I think that was a pretty uh, inflammatory statement for Fana. I'm trying to not annoy everyone. Cool. Um, and just finally, some things I did just want to just end, end on is uh, a lot of the time you'll be spending a lot of time on these characters and assets. You'll be looking at these, you'll be looking at these goddamn faces for months. And you have to remember that a lot of the time you'll lose frame of reference on the quality that you're making. Your work is good. Um, just remember that like anyone looking at a painting, like a fantastic painting for about three months would also get sick of that thing. Someone looking at it for a few minutes will still find value in it and it still looks excellent. Um, that's more of a morale thing um, for me, uh, but it's, it's really worth remembering. Um, past that, it, it, can be, it can be tiring and it can, be tricky to try and can like continue working on portfolio finding jobs while you're continuing to try and work on projects take your time where you can 
relax if you need to. And this is this is a skill unto itself. Um, and it needs to be worked on. And uh, it's still incredibly important though. Um, I think I think that's everything though. Um, thank you for your time.